It's a little bit of a mess, but it's fine. I mean, this is very realistic. You know, it's not really a practice, but it is a practice. I have a photo of myself on the wall of when I was, I don't know, maybe five years old. I really go back to that inner child. Like, I think it's important for all artists to remember how we had no fear at that age. We had no fear. We had no expectations. We were just like the whole world was out there for us to discover and and play and everything seemed fun. And so I feel like adulting has kind of like pushed us into a position where we 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 live off of people's judgment or we're afraid of doing things. We don't want to be wrong. We want to be right. We want to look good. And so I really do practice going to my inner child that didn't give a shit, that was just having fun, and that was doing things just for the pure joy of doing things. And I suggest any artist to really think about that because that way you can just feel free. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> just to remind me of who I was. Naked, <laughs> not giving a shit. You really don't have any worries. This is Disco, and we're here with another episode of Art Talk. Today we have a very, very, very special guest and actually one of my favorite artists and I definitely plan to own some of her work in the future and support. So without further ado, the amazing Sachiko. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that amazing introduction. I no. feel very honored. The very first moment I saw you work, I said, I get it. Thank you. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I'm going to blush. <laughs> um, so, I mean, jumping straight into it, um, what, what inspires you uh, to create these, these masterpieces? Well, my process, honestly, is um, very intuitive. I don't limit myself to anything. So I feel like when I, you know, I started painting as a child, so... My dad's a painter, so it's always been something that I just really enjoy doing. And when I paint, I kind of go into a meditative state where I just don't think anymore. Mm. And so it's kind of like, I don't know the outcome every time I make a painting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like... I might have an idea, but then it just changes as I'm painting. So that's kind of like the fascinating part. And I also think that, you know, I'm very critical about my own work. So it's never finished. I just have to stop at a certain point. You know, I just have oh, to wow. say, okay, enough. The only thing I actually really kind of focus on when I'm, when I'm working is since I use these sound bowls, I charge my paint. Mm. I charge my paint energetically because um, one of the things that I did, let's say, decide was I didn't want to put any negative emotions into my art. Right. Because if it's something that somebody's going to buy and put it in their home, you know, I think in a museum it's a bit different because it's kind of interesting to see the right. torments of the artist, you know, I think. But I grew up in a, you know, male environment of male artists that were all depressed. They were all, you know, ex-drug addicts or whatever, you know, they just all had a very difficult life. I felt very mm, uncomfortable you know, mm. in front of their art. And I hated that, you know? It was right. just like, oh, you know, I would never put that in my house. But not because it's not beautiful. It's just... You just don't want the energy. I don't want that energy. So when I really did, you know, decide on painting, I said, you know, I want to bring some good vibes into people's homes. You know, I want it to be something where they feel happy, where there's joy, where there's love, you know? So I do put that intention into my work. That screams on it. And I think that that's why I even like, I tend to, you know, uh, I think humans just tend to kind of gravitate towards good energy, right? right? So I think that that's why it's like, when you see that work, it's just like, oh, yeah. I need it. If the purpose is that I want, whoever decides to buy the painting to have it in their home and it brings them joy. 
Right. You know what I mean? Because it's like when you buy yourself something really special, it makes you happy, right? This, I, I feel like I want my art to just continue making you feel happy. It does. I mean, well, for, me, <laughs> for me, at least, it definitely does. Um, going back to the process, right? Or, or your non-process. Non -process. Yeah, like, well, <laughs> just yeah. kind of go into it. Yeah. The one thing that I've, I've always found to be um, interesting about that and also very difficult uh, within myself as an artist is to be cohesive with what it is that I'm putting out. Well, you know, that comes with practice because I have never given myself, uh, how do you say, like, oh, I'm going to do this style. I'm going to repeat dots all the time. Or, you know, I've never done anything like that just because, first of all, I want the freedom to continue creating no matter what I'm doing. And then other people can judge whether it's good or not. But my father, who was, you know, a pretty well-known artist in his later years said, I can't stand painting anymore because I feel like I'm just copying myself. Mm. So that was kind of a statement that kind of stuck with me. And I said, I don't want to have that. I don't want to have the limitation where if you become successful in a certain specific thing then you just keep repeating it because people like it you have to continue just painting because you like it because it brings you joy and because it's what it's like a discovery for yourself you know right. and so I feel like your style will be cohesive because you're doing it we all have a little bit something you know our our brush strokes are always the same or we tend to choose certain colors because we're attracted to them you know so I don't think that the cohesive thing is a choice. It's more about our hand in it, right, our right, vision right. in it, you know? So that becomes cohesive. Ah, uh, you know, I, again, I, you know, I, I just recently had my show. And, Which I uh, love, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, but I think that that was one of the things that, even for that show that I had to do, was let go in trying to, be something or or trying to you know say something even though it's like oh yeah you have to like it has to tell a story but I think that the 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 part of that story is already within you the story is you yeah you know I think that the whole point of art is actually you know showing people through your eyes what you see right I don't love explanations because it's more about how you feel. Right. You know, like when I go, but it's also interesting to know more about the artist. It's also interesting to have some background things that you might not know. Even when I go to museums, it's about how a piece makes me feel. That's that simple. It's that's that simple. simple. How attracted I am to it. Yeah. How drawn I am to it. And that's really, I feel, you know, the important thing. And then another thing I think that for the viewer, it's kind of interesting to ask questions, you know. So when you go to a, a museum and you see something and you don't know anything about that piece of art, or, you know, it makes you kind of like think and ask questions and wonder why they did it or why they did it that way, you know. And right. that's the interesting part, I think, you know, I, activating the thinking. <laughs> I, be I believe so, too. I think that that's where... Um I've, I've come to the conclusion, too, that you have to be uh, kind of open-minded to that. You know, like, I think that sometimes people go into... Wanting too much explanation about it. Exactly. What does this piece mean? What is it? I mean, if you just sit with it and just let it be, mm -hmm. then you will feel. And then whatever you feel from that is kind of what, you know, will give. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I've always tried to find something into what they were doing and I think it was more so because of me trying to figure out my own yeah. journey yeah. in it which brings me to you know you you talked about uh wanting to know more about the artists do you feel like maybe there should be a way for artists to be more tied to to their pieces or for people to know them I do find it very interesting mm -hmm. to get some inside you know information I mean it does add to that and it does add also knowing who the artist is right and, you know a little bit about their story their background because you know the art is the artist also right I really tend to 
think, and you know, I would say to you too, also don't ever make comparisons about it. Because, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like everyone is so unique in their own way. Everybody right. has their own vision. Everybody has their own, you know, technique and inspiration and way to go about it. So I love seeing things. I think that what I've realized recently, one of the things that I like the most is, you know, I watch like documentaries about artists and stuff. And the thing that I've realized is that the artists that became the most successful hung around together. Mm. So there was talking about ideas, there was hanging out, you know, it was, uh, I don't want to say like a collab thing, but it kind of was, you right. know, there was a lot of artists that were very successful that were couples and we know them individually. But then when you get to like, you know, you go to a show and you realize, oh, that artist was married to that artist. Right. How interesting. So I feel like artists need to group, hang out, talk about creativity, get the ideas flowing because ideas, you know, they grow. But I really think that there's something there. Uh, so you say you, you, you come from a family full of artists. Would you like to touch on that? Yeah, my dad, you know, he was doing shows and, you know, all over the world. And even as a teenager, I would go, like, he would invite me after my parents separated. I'd go to the show in Paris, the show in Barcelona, and, and get to meet, you know, so many different artists. It was a real luxury, you know, yeah. to be able to grow up in, in that, you know, in that world and, you know, go to artists' houses and have dinner with them or play with their kids. It was great. I feel like for a long time, I felt a little overwhelmed mm. because I met, you know, some pretty big names. Then I kind of went back and was like, oh, but they're just normal people, you right. know, and they all started somewhere and they all probably have the same insecurities. When I, you know, started my, you know, art practice, let's say, I was like, okay, well, everyone starts somewhere. And I had the fortune, you know, at least to see high quality work. You know, and, 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 and learn, but at the same time, instead of comparing myself, I just said, you know, I'm going to start and I'm going to paint every day until I feel yeah. like, you know. Was that always your career path or what, what started you in your career? Oh, until? well, actually, <laughs> okay, interesting question. So, my father, when I was very young, like maybe six or seven, and I was painting in the studio next to him, you know, he had his big painting, and he was done, you know, I always had my little situation. And I felt very, like, proud of myself, and very convinced that I was a painter since I was little. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, when I grow up, I'm going to be an artist. And he was like, ah, not good idea. You know, artists, they usually end up hungry, you're a woman, so it's going to be harder for you to make it in the art world. And on top of that, you're my daughter, so you'll always be compared to me. And so he kind of like, I want to say a little smashed my dream right, of, right. of being wow. a painter. So I ended up choosing um, things that were tied to creativity, like interior design, set design, uh, I was doing windows for for fashion stores in Italy. So anything I could think of that gave me a chance to be creative, I kind of pursued it right. with the idea that I couldn't be an artist. I actually did commit after moving here because my idea was to start my design business and you know just continue what I was doing in Europe. And then when the pandemic hit, not to go crazy, I just started painting, mm. you know, and I just painted all day. And, and I also was like, you know, in a new home with no paintings on the wall, which was kind of weird to me because I've always had my father's paintings on the walls, you know, like in right. my houses. So I just started like doing it for myself. And um, a friend of mine who's an interior designer, and we were doing a little project together, came to the house and was like, no, you need to show your work. Yeah. You know, initially I was very like insecure about it. And I don't know, like maybe like a week later, just some person from New York was like, I really like this piece, how much? And I was like, what? And all of a sudden for me it was like, oh, okay. So there is someone out there that likes my work. I feel that everything is proceeding and it's going, you know, but you know, you know, 
I mean, yeah, yeah. Artist yeah. life is not easy. No. <laughs> you know, it's very insecure, so. Yeah. No, definitely. You kind of I mean, have to be like, okay, no matter what happens, this is what I want to do. You yeah. Know? That's it. Yeah. Just do it. You know, like, when you just know, you know, there's certain artists where you just like. Thank you. you they, they have it. The, the, the work speaks for itself. Everything is there. I, I definitely personally put you in that category. And like I said, I'm like genuinely, thank you're one you. of my favorite artists. Uh, I just, um, you know, thank you. Thank you for, for taking the time and, and doing this and, and being a part of this. Like not thank you to the pandemic, but thank yeah, the no, pandemic no, for. No. <laughs> thank you to the pandemic in the end, because, you know, sometimes you need a kick in the ass to, to do what you're supposed to be doing, you know? Right. Like sometimes it's the fear that keeps you from doing it or just some stupid idea that limits you, you know? And, you know, working out of your own creativity, if it's something that you really desire so much, it's something that sh just should be, you know, pursued. And I think that every artist should do that, you know? Yeah. If it's something that they're feeling that strongly, do it. Is there anything that you probably, you know, want to tell any up and coming artists or any gems, jewels you want to? Want to drop? Oh, wow. We're always worried about what other people think, you right. know? Just stop it. Just be yourself, you know? Be authentic. Do things you love doing. And do it for you. Well, thank you, Satrick. So oh, my I God, appreciate thank it. you. Thank you. This is amazing. This is where I get my good vibes from. <laughs>